Your jailbroken Nintendo 2DS or 3DS system can do a whole lot more than just play cartridge games. With just one single download, you can start playing retro games from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and even 2000s, all on your jailbroken system. I'm about to show you everything it takes step by step to get this up and running in just a matter of minutes. Come on, let's install RetroArch on your jailbroken 2DS or 3DS system. It's time we started taking your online protection seriously. Before you start downloading things off the internet, get connected to a VPN first. I use NordVPN personally and it's fantastic. You can get a huge discount on it at the link in the description. To get all of this working on your jailbroken 2DS or 3DS system, you'll need to download RetroArch. It's linked for you in the description. Scroll down on the page until you see the listing for the Nintendo 3DS and 2DS family of game systems. The file you're looking for in this section is called RetroArch.cia. Click on that file to download it to your computer. Once you have RetroArch downloaded, you'll need to uncompress the file. It's in 7Z format, and I have a tool for you in the description if you need one. Once you have this file uncompressed, delete the 7Z file out of your downloads folder in order to eliminate clutter. Insert the SD or micro SD card from your 2DS or 3DS system. Then arrange the windows to your liking. In this case, I have the PC downloads folder on the left and the 3DS SD card on the right. In the downloads folder, double click into the RetroArch folder that you just uncompressed. You'll find two folders inside here, one called CIA and one called RetroArch. Navigate to the folder called CIA and double click into it. Inside this folder, you'll find a file called RetroArch.CIA. You'll need to copy that file to your 3DS or 2DS SD or micro SD card. It makes no difference where you put it on the card. If you followed my original jailbreak guide, you've already got a folder on your 2DS or 3DS card called CIAs. I'm just going to drop it right in there. Next step, go back one level in the folder structure. Remember that there was a folder there named RetroArch? Drag and drop that folder to the root of your SD or micro SD card. Pay close attention to make sure that you don't drop it into one of the folders so that it becomes a subfolder. It needs to live right on the root of the SD or micro SD card. Double click into the RetroArch folder that you just copied over. Inside that folder, you'll need to create two new subfolders. Right click in an open space, select new, and then folder. Name this folder downloads with a capital D. You'll see the reason for the capital D in just a moment. Click outside of this new folder to deselect it. Now right click in an open space, select new, and folder once again. Rename this folder to system, all in lowercase. I have a folder on drive C called ROMs on C, and I have some sample ROMs and some RetroArch system files copied over here so that we can take a look at where to put them on your micro SD or SD card. Some consoles in RetroArch require those system BIOS files in order to work correctly. Double click into the folder that has the system BIOS files that you want to copy over. Select all of the BIOS files at one time. That way you can just move everything over at once. Then drag and drop all of your system BIOS files into the system folder on your SD or micro SD card. Now that you've got your system BIOS files copied over, select the downloads folder. I have all of the game ROMs in the ROMs on C folder split into their own subfolders with the console names on them. All of those game files are also in zip format in each of the subfolders. You can literally just grab all of the folders that have your game ROM content and drag and drop them all all at one time into the downloads folder on your SD or micro SD card. Now that you have all of the content copied over and your SD or micro SD card set up correctly, you can close out any instances of File Explorer on your PC, remove the SD or micro SD card from your computer, insert it back into your 2DS or 3DS system, and power on your system. Remember that FBI application from the jailbreaking process? It's the same application we're gonna use to install that RetroArch.cia file. Select FBI from the list of choices from your home menu. In the list of menu choices in the bottom display, select SD with the A button. Navigate to the location where you copied over the RetroArch.CIA file. In this case, it's the CIA's folder. Select it with the A button, then select the RetroArch.CIA file with the A button. From the list of choices that appear, select Install and Delete CIA file with the A button. Then at the confirmation prompt, select yes with the A button to install RetroArch. Once RetroArch has been successfully installed, you'll see a confirmation message. Press the A button to continue. Press the home button on your 2DS or 3DS system. This will take you back to the main menu, and you'll be notified that you have a new present waiting to be unwrapped. 
I love presents. Press the A button to continue, and you'll be taken to the newly installed RetroArch on your home menu. Press the A button to unwrap the present and access RetroArch. Press the A button to launch RetroArch for the first time. Be aware that you may see a black screen for up to about 30 seconds. From the RetroArch main menu, you'll need to load a core in order to play the games that you want to play. Move the highlight arrow down to load core and select it with the A button. Locate the core that matches the game console that you want to play, in this case the Atari Lynx. I specifically chose this system because it requires the use of those system BIOS files we copied over. Select the core you want to use with the A button. After another black load screen of about 20 or 30 seconds, you'll be back at the RetroArch main menu with the core loaded. Alright, you've put in the work, it's time for the payoff. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to load content and select it with the A button. Remember how we named that folder Downloads with a capital D inside the RetroArch folder on your memory card? Here's why. All you have to do to get to your content is move that highlight arrow down to the Downloads section and select it with the A button. And whammo! Instantly you'll have access to all of your ROM folders all in one place in the quickest method possible to get them loaded up. To show you that everything works as expected, I'm going to launch a game, in this case the Atari Lynx game California Games. As the games are in zip format, you'll need to press the A button several times to go into the zip archive and launch the ROM file itself. Just keep pressing A until the game loads up. And just like that, you're in. But there's an extra component to all of this, and if you ignore this, you're missing out on an important part of the RetroArch experience for your 3DS or 2DS system. You can also play PlayStation 1 games using this video shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description. I'll look forward to seeing you there.